All right. Good morning, everybody. Great to see everybody here this morning. My name is uh, Brian Mosley. I almost forgot my name there for a second. But I serve as a lead pastor here at the Springs Church, and I'm delighted to see each of you here today. Thank you so much for coming. Whether you're a uh, first-time guest with us here, welcome. Uh, or if you're a regular here, we're super glad that you are here as well. So today we're talking, we're, I'm going to continue talking about this idea of the heart of worship. Would you say that with me this morning? The heart of worship. And I've been praying this week that God would help us to see the truth about what's going on in each of our hearts. You know, a lot of times we cannot, we cannot, it doesn't, it's not helpful to be introspective sometimes. It's helpful to ask God to reveal what's going on in our hearts. And so I've been praying over you and over myself that the Holy Spirit would reveal the truth about what's going on in each of our hearts, especially when it comes to worship and when it comes to worshiping him. So let me start with a question this morning. When you hear the word worship, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Most for some people, when they hear the word worship, they think about that singing part in a church service, right? What we just did, what we spent a few minutes singing, it was beautiful, had a wonderful time singing those songs like, great are you, Lord, or if you grew up in church, you might have sang songs like, Lord, I lift your name on high, or you remember that? I'm not a singer, so I'm not going to bless you with my voice, okay? But we sing some songs like that, and some people think that worship is just that. But guess what? It's so much more than that. Worshiping God is by singing is great. But the truth is, worshiping is far more than just the singing part in a worship service. Amen? Amen. Other people, when they hear the word worship, they think of the, the entire church service, right? Well, every part of a church service, well, it's called a worship service, right? So there's the greeting, there's prayer, there's giving, there's uh, the singing, there's listening to the preaching. Once a month, we celebrate communion together, We're, and we fellowship together, and we serve together. What is, what is that? That is worship. But is that all that worship is. It, worship is far more than a worship service. So I want you to think about that this morning. What is worship? And the truth I want us to consider today is this. If you, if you are here and you're a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, I want you to think about this. This is up on the screen. Everything we do Everything we are can and should be offered to the Lord as an act of heartfelt worship. And here's what I want you to write down if you're taking notes with me. Worship is a lifestyle. Worship is the way we live. Worship is something that happens in our hearts because God has transformed us, he has changed us, he has made us new, he has saved us, and now we live a life every single day in practical ways, in all kinds of decisions, we worship in response to what God has already done in each of our lives. So we're going to unpack that a little bit more. If you have your Bibles, you want to open up your Bible app, or they're, they're going to be up on the screen as well, these verses. But we're going to be in Mark chapter 12 primarily today. So Mark chapter 12, we'll start over in verse 28, and we'll go through verse 34. I'll give you just a second to get there if you're turning your pages. It says this. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, out of all the commandments, which one is the most important? Stop right there. Listen, this, guy, this teacher of the law came to Jesus and he had a very important question. Which of the commandments is the greatest? The biggest, the most important, the first. What is, it's a great question, 
Okay, and it's an important question for us to pay attention to the answer to. Verse 29, he said, Jesus answered, The most important one is this. And then he quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 6. He says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Look at verse 30. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. Did you hear the totality of that verse? Love the Lord your God with everything that you have, everything that you are. Love him with your heart. Love him with your soul. Love him with your mind. Love him with all your strength. Verse 31 says this. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Verse 32. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is, no, there is no other but him. To love him with all of your heart, with all of your understanding, and with all of your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is the most important, is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Verse 34, when Jesus saw that he had answered wisely... How many of you know it's good to answer wisely to Jesus? Okay. Answer wisely. He said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So he gave him a great answer and Jesus said, ding, ding, ding. You have answered wisely. The kingdom of God is not far from you. And so what I want us to do this morning is just to take some time to really focus on that verse 30. So let's put that verse 30, Mark chapter 12, verse 30, back on the screen. I want us to dive into this and really think about what the Lord Jesus is saying in this chapter right here. Because I believe the Spirit of God will be saying some things to us here today if we have ears to listen. Verse 30 again says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Everybody say heart. And with all your soul, say soul. And with all your mind, say mind. And with all your strength. With all your strength. I think sometimes, and it is for me, this is a struggle because I've heard this verse a lot. And it has become so familiar. I'm like, yeah, 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 I got it. This is the great commandment. This is the first. This is the most important thing. I got it. Love the Lord my God with everything I got, with all my heart, my soul. And I just kind of go through the motions. And it can be dangerous to become so familiar with a verse that you think you know it all. So what I want us to do is think about this verse in a very fresh way, like we're looking at it for the very first time. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will illuminate this in each of our hearts today. Because God wants the first commandment to be established in our life in first place. When the first commandment is not first place in our life, it causes out of order. It causes chaos. It causes imbalance. And I believe the priority of the Holy Spirit in this season, he's calling the church, the people of God, to prioritize this greatest commandment to be first place in your life. To find the greatest joy in this life. Loving God with all of our hearts should be our life mission statement. This is one of the things that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me day after day, especially this year. At the beginning of the year, I'm always praying, God, give me a word for this year. And at the beginning of 2019, he gave me Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Brian, here's what I want 
from you. Here's what I want for you. I want you to learn to love me. I don't want you to focus on all these secondary things. I don't want you to focus on ministry or this or that. I want your heart to love me. And out of that love, Brian, I'm going to teach you how to serve others. I'm going to teach you how to minister out of the overflow. You see, when you take the second commandment, which is love your neighbor as yourself, and you make it the first commandment, what happens? You get burned out real quick. You can get mad, you can get angry, you can get way out of balance in your life. But what God wants to teach me and wants to teach all of us is the priority of the first commandment. Keeping him first in everything that we do. All of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. To make it our greatest passion our highest dream, our one big major focus in life is to love God. Oh, that he would give me more grace to love him more. That the Holy Spirit would anoint me to be a lover of God, to be a worshiper of God in spirit and in truth, and not be consumed with all these other secondary things so much. Yes, we have to do certain things, but where is my major focus? Is it on loving him, or is it on something else? Sometimes we misinterpret what God is doing in our lives. How many of you know that sometimes he will take away our options and strip us down to kind of our core things? Why? Because he's after something. What is it that he's after? He's after your heart. He wants to have an extravagant love relationship with you. And sometimes he allows us to go through this or that or this problem or this struggle. Why? So that he can get your attention. So that he can speak to you and that you will listen and you will turn your heart back to him. He's re he removes step by step. He's the great orchestrator. He does these wonderful things in our lives to remove clutter and disorder. And, and why? Because he wants to get to the core of our lives, to have a love relationship with us. Am I telling you the truth today? Okay. Write this down if you're taking notes. This is up on the screen. Loving and living for God must be our top priority. This is what Jesus said. This is the greatest commandment. How could our greatest priority be something else? We'll be in disobedience if we're not loving God and worshiping him only as our greatest priority. Our natural tendency, I know it is for me, so I'm guessing that maybe it is for you, but my natural tendency is to focus more on getting blessings or making sure that my circumstances are, are better. Or I'm focusing on money and my paycheck. And I'm focusing on uh, honor and recognition and pleasing people and, and influencing people. And I get so locked into my circumstances. And I, and I just start thinking, well, if, if everything would just go right... And everybody would just do what I want them to do, then I would be blessed and I would be fulfilled in this life. But this is not how it works. This thing, these things in life will never fulfill us. They will never fulfill us. Only a love relationship with God, extravagant, beautiful intimate time with God, worshiping him and focusing on, on him is the only thing that will fulfill us. Amen? Amen? 
that thrill and joy of getting a new car or getting a new house lasts for a short time, especially when the repairs start being to start needing to happen and breakdowns happen with the appliances that were never anticipated and we end up complaining about that which we thought would bring us everlasting joy and happiness. And we look forward to that long-awaited vacation that we've been saving up for and working hard for and, and we, we go and we, in, we enjoy this week away, but when we get back, we're soon exhausted again. Running the, the race of everyday life. But I want to encourage you today that that first and the greatest commandment has the greatest impact on on God's heart. It's what he wants from us. It's what he wants for us. It has the greatest impact on God's heart, but it also will have the greatest impact on your heart. If it is your greatest calling, if it is your highest pursuit, your primary dream in life, is to love him more. You know, I think about this. This is, this is the God of the universe. He is our redeemer. He created everything. He is, he is majestic and holy. And what is it that he wants? He wants a love relationship with you. He made us. He created us to only be fulfilled through that love relationship with himself. And when we pass on, when we die, we won't bring our money. We won't bring our houses. We won't bring our Facebook likes or our Instagram posts, right? We can't bring any of that with us. But what we will bring is our growth in love. How much did we love God? How much did we love other people? That is going to stay with us for eternity. Now, let's break it down. I want you to jot these notes down if you're taking notes. We're really going to just hammer in on this Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Number one, I want you to write down this. God wants us to love him with our affections. With our affections. This is our, this is our heart. And as I've been encouraging you, when we, when we set our heart to intentionally lo- make G- loving Jesus our primary pursuit in life, this pleases the heart of God. And our secondary pursuits become things like our, our marriage, our family, our vocation, our ministry, the things that we have going on. They all flow out of this primary pursuit of loving God. And so it's our affections, it's our heart. And I've been learning just in this year that the most important decision that I can make in life is when I decide that my primary pursuit is the first commandment, to love him, to keep him first, to worship him with everything that I am. And I've been praying this prayer, and it's, up, it's going to be up on the screen with this verse. And I want to invite you to pray it with me. But it says this, Lord, help me to set my heart to love and pursue you wholeheartedly as my primary dream and my greatest ambition in life. Lord, would you help my heart? to be in that place of loving you first. Number two is this, jot this down. God wants us to love him with our personality, who he made us to be. Are we introverted? Are we extroverted? Do we like people? Do we want to be alone all the time? And and where do we find our sense of success? And where do we find our sense of identity? Is it in our relationship with God or is it in our performance? 
Is it in our relationship with God or is it in our recognition, in our achievements, in our affirmations that come from other people? Our identity and our, and our success should be wrapped up in this. I am loved by God. I am loved by God and I am a lover of God. Therefore, I am successful. And I am secure because I am in him. And so sometimes we get, our hearts get drift, pulled away, get dragged away because we think our identity and our success is wrapped up in what we achieve or who applauds us for what we achieve. And when we live that way, we burn out. And we experience an emotional roller coaster, an emotional storm when our success and our identity is tied up in those other things. But what God wants us to do is to love him with our soul, with our personality, where everything about us, our success and our identity, all comes from this. I am a lover of God. I am loved by God. Therefore, I am successful and secure. And I've been praying this prayer. Lord, help me to exert my energy to realign my heart towards my relationship with you rather than my accomplishments or recognition from others. Help me to love you and help me to love others with everything that I've got, with all of my strength. Number three, jot this down if you're taking notes with me. God wants us to love him with our intellect. Our mind, when we express love for God with our mind, we're putting things in our mind that inspire love for him instead of diminish love for him. To love God with all of our minds involves taking the time to fill our minds with the truth of God's word so that we're not led away by the deceptions of the enemy and what the culture would try to make us believe. No, our thoughts need to be aligned with the truth of what he says in his holy word. Amen? Amen. We gain revelation about who God is and about his love when we meditate on God's word. I love that word, meditate. If you've been around here a time or two, you probably heard me say this. I'm from Tennessee, so uh, there's farmland, and we have uh, lots of green around. It, around here, it's like brown and dirt, and you know it has a beauty of its own. But um, you know, I used to enjoy like uh, cows, for example. Okay, and you know what cows do, right? They chew the cud. Okay, so some, they're just sitting there eating grass, eating whatever they're eating, and their mouth is going you know, back and forth, just grinding and chewing back and forth. They're chewing the cud. And so that's what I think about when I think about meditating on God's word. We're, we're chewing on God's word. We're thinking about it all the time. We're, we're meditating on it. It's not a new age meditation where you empty your mind, right? Mm, okay, it's not that. But instead, Christianity, biblical Christianity is about not emptying your mind, but filling your mind with the word of God, right? And so how do we love God with our minds? Well, we avoid the unhealthy things that can, that can input like violent movies or, or images that can cause us to be tempted by lust or greed or all these things. We can avoid those things and just pay attention to them and think about what we think about. Boy, this is so important for us today. We cannot let our minds just roam wherever they want to roam. We have to pay attention to what we think about. At home, we have two little dogs. They're named Buck and Libby. 
Little, uh, what kind of dogs are they again? Malty poos. Maltese and poodle mix, okay? So when they were younger, we were teaching them how to uh, be potty trained, right? And sometimes they, there would just be accidents in the house, and we would have to go around and clean up the carpet, clean up the floors, and it was just a bad situation. But then finally, I'm like, I got to put my foot down here. We got to make some changes because our house can't be smelling like this. And, and our three boys weren't helping out and they were letting the dogs. See, here's the, here's the problem. We were letting the dogs roam around unsupervised. Wherever they wanted to go, they could go. And they went. <laughs> and they made a stinky mess. But what's the point? We cannot let our thoughts roam around wherever the current takes them. But we got to be in charge of our thoughts. We got to say, no, these doors are closed. No, we're going to avoid this. We're going to avoid that. But no, we're going to fill our minds. We're going to pay attention to our thoughts and make sure that they are aligned with the word of God. Because we don't need a bunch of stinky messes in our lives, right? Okay. So we want to love God with all of our minds. And here's the prayer that I've been praying. Lord, help me to fill my mind with your word and with those things that inspire love. So that I can freely receive your love and express it fully. You guys still with me this morning? Okay. Number four is this. God wants us to love him with our resources, with all of our strength. We express love for God in how we use our strength, how we use our resources of of time, of money, of energy, of talents, of words, of influence. God takes great delight even in the small things that we do that invest our strength in ways that express love for him and love for other people. He loves it when we serve. He loves it when we give. He loves it when we, when we pray. He loves it when we take time to bless other people. God takes pleasure in these small things and the big things that his people do when they invest their strength in ways that express love for God and love for others. And here's my prayer for this section. It's, Lord, help me to use my strength and my resources of money, energy, talents, and influence in ways that express my love for you and help others to love you more. So what, what I want you to see is this. It's, it's summarized very beautifully. You guys know who Darlene uh, Check is? She's a, a founder of Hillsong Music. Hillsong Music is just a, a wonderful ministry. Lots of the songs that we sing uh, these days come from there. But she made this point, and I agree with it wholeheartedly. She said this, Worship is more than singing beautiful songs in church on a Sunday. It is more than instruments and music. As a true worshiper, your heart will long to worship him at all times, in all ways, and with all your life. I want to invite the worship team back up at this point. But I want to encourage you guys to think about your heart. Think about where your heart is because the heart of worship Listen, this is up on the screen. The heart of worship is about loving God extravagantly with every part of your life. Why? <laughs> this is the best part of the, whole, of the whole message I've got for you this morning. Because he first extravagantly loved you. Friends, God loves us. 
He loves us immensely. He loves us with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, all of his strength. God does not ask us to do something for him that he has not done first for us. And so why do we love him? Because he first loved us. That's what it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love, why? Because he first loved us. This is what Christianity is all about. This is it in a nutshell. We love God and we love others, but we can only do this when we understand and experience the love that God had for us first. It was through Jesus Christ that we see the full extent of God's extravagant love. We see the love of God shown to us clearly through Jesus and his work on the cross, laying down his life so that we could have freedom, so that we could be forgiven, so that our debts could be paid so that we could be made whole. Our lives have become completely transformed. Why? Because of what Jesus did on that cross. And God loved us before we were ever thought of. God loved us before we became regenerated and born again. God loved us before we had any desire to love him. God loved us when we hated him, we were, when we were an enemy of his. God loved us, and God loved us in spite of the fact that we were unlovely and unlovable. We love, why? Because he first loved us. I read a story this week about an old man. He was visiting London for the first time. And he went to one of those um, wonderful uh, picture, uh, what is it called? Art, an art museum, sorry. Okay, it's not that hard, but I'm from Tennessee, so sometimes it takes me a minute. He went to this art museum, and he looked around, and he saw a wonderful painting of Jesus. And it was Jesus as he was hanging on the cross. And he stopped there and he wanted to just stop and gaze at this picture. And he had such a great love for this one who was hanging on the cross. And love flooded his heart and all he could say as he stood there and gazed upon this picture is, I love him. I love him. He just stood there. Tears began to roll down his face. And he looked at that picture and he just kept saying, I love him, I love him. He was captivated by the love of the Son of God that he was seeing in this picture. And soon a stranger drew near to him and grabbed his hand and said, I love him too, brother. I love him too. And after a few minutes, a third person stepped up and stepped forward and said, so do I. I love him too. I love him too. A fourth and a fifth came and stood before the picture. And, all, and uh, after a while, the, a whole group of just perfect strangers stood there in front of this beautiful picture of Jesus. And they were all drawn there because of the love of God that was shown through Christ Jesus and they stood there as perfect strangers and they all gazed upon this picture of Jesus on the cross saying I love him I love him and I thought about this, this guy he, he knew that his greatest calling in life he had learned this most important lesson that it was so important to love God with all of his heart with all of his soul, with all of his mind, with all of his strength. Listen, friends, there is no greater joy than loving God and then helping other people to learn to do so. Nothing will satisfy us long term except for God himself. 
and all these other blessings in our lives, all these other pursuits flow out of our relationship with him, first and foremost. Paul said it like this in the message paraphrase. This is what I want us to do as we close together. Paul said this, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Place your life before a holy God, the one who loved you first. Place your life as an offering before him and ask him to help you love him more. That's my prayer. God, would you give us your grace? Would you anoint us by your Holy Spirit to live a life that is committed to that first commandment, to love God with everything that we are, everything that we have. Everything becomes an act of worship when we worship as a lifestyle. Amen.